one month into the demonetization and much has been said about what it means for the entire nation. Post the Demon's arrival, the process of digitization has hastened. But along with it comes the fear of cyber threats. Much of the attention has now shifted to mobile wallets. But there lies certain grey areas which needs to be addressed in terms of laws and procedures. To gain an insight uh, into the mobile wallet industry and the cyber threats attached to it, we have with us today Mr. Srikant Nandamini, Chairman Nuvope, who has spent uh, almost a decade and a half in Silicon Valley developing softwares and internet startups. And interestingly, he was also the head of technology at the UID Authority of India. Sir, uh, welcome to DILTube.com. Happy to be here. Thank you. Pleasure having you with us. So let me start uh, uh, with my first question. I would like to ask you now, uh, post the demonetization exercise that the government has taken, the radical step that the government has taken, uh, there has been unprecedented boom in the uh, mobile wallet industry. Now, in your view, do you think that this is just a temporary phase uh, till the time the, the, the crowd cross December and the industry is going to see a gradual fall after that? Well, 97% uh, of India's $600 billion of retail transactions are cash today. Yes. Or at least they were cash prior to number eight. Uh, and taking away 86% of the cash from the economy obviously has a huge impact yes. on that uh, economy, on the, on the retail transactions. Uh, so two things have happened. A lot of people were in the, uh, on the fence with respect to, do I even need to figure out digital, mobile, UPI, Absolutely. all of that, I think have made a behavioral shift from saying cash only, cash works for me to, I think I have to figure out what this new thing is Good. because it's hurting me. Yes. Okay. Whether it's temporary or permanent, it's at least opened up people's mind to saying, I think I need to look for this digital payments economy. Why is it important? If it was a short-term thing and cash was wonderful, we could continue with that. But unfortunately, cash comes with a expense. It brings a friction into our economy, a fairly large friction. There is risk. Every ATM has to be guarded with people with guns and so on and so forth. Otherwise, people might take money away from there. Right? Similarly, traders, businessmen, when they deal with cash, there's a risk associated with cash. While there's an ease and convenience, there's also a risk associated with cash. Whereas when you do online transactions, that risk goes down to almost zero. Of course, assuming that the protocols are nice and actually the transactions happen seamlessly. So I think that behavioral shift is what I think is the most important thing that has happened on the demonetization front. Right. Other than the what are the goals of anti-corruption and so on and so forth. Right. To me, the silver lining, if you will, is India moving gradually away from cash into a digital economy because it brings a lot of benefits. If okay. people, a poor person in his heart doesn't have to keep cash. He can have money in the bank account, but he should, he should be able to operate it with a phone or walk up to a Kirana store and do the same operation online. Okay. Right? So those things are all made possible because of this behavioral shift. So in that sense, I see this as a very positive thing. For long term. Okay. So when you just mentioned that the ATMs have to be guarded and there are risks associated with cash. So um, having said that, I'm sure not good standing, there are uh, cyber security threats associated with online transactions as well. So um, when I talk about uh, the, the in IT Act of uh, Section 43A, so most of the big tech companies do not comply with that. Now, once there are fraud fraudulent transactions committed, or some cyber threats committed. Uh, in terms of uh, owners, who owns the responsibility once the yeah. transactions are done? Um, it's not a free-for-all. The central banker, the Reserve Bank of India, regulates these financial transactions. So it's not as though because there could be threats online, we don't know if people lose money, who pays for it, right? It's not uh, that bad is what I'm trying to say. So let's take okay. the case of a credit card transaction or a debit card transaction. Right. There are not okay. as many credit cards in India. Right. Debit card transaction. Right. The issuer of the debit card, right. the bank, mm -hmm. is the one that is authenticating the transaction. That okay. is, you walk up to a store in Delhi and say, here's my card because I don't have cash. Can, can I buy that? Right. When he runs it through his pause machine, that transaction goes to the bank Correct. to see if you're authorized to do it. And how do you prove it is you? 
by punching in your PIN code. Correct. Right. And the bank right. says, I authorize this transaction. Right. Now, if something goes wrong in that transaction, it is the bank that has the onus of ensuring that it's a smooth transaction. And those, there are one set of terms and conditions that the bank offers to you as an issuer of the card. Right. There's also re regulation about it as to what is the onus of the bank on that transaction. If there's a dispute, for instance, Correct. if the p product was faulty, if the uh, uh, online uh, seller didn't send you the right product. Right. So exactly. Yeah. When, a, when there is transaction that happens between a customer and a merchant, uh, uh, it is made a contract between the merchant and the customer. Are there any strong laws, uh, laws strong enough uh, to uh, resolve these kind of uh, issues once a fraudulent transaction is committed or somebody? There, it's sort of layered at different uh, at different places. One, of course, the central banker says, uh, takes the regulatory role to ensure that fair transactions are going on, and they have a set of rules about how banks shall behave and how they shall issue these uh, credentials, like cards and so on. There's also the network providers like Visa and Master and Rupee and so on, who also have their rules about it right. on you know refunds, on taking back things, and so on. And why does that work? Because if the merchant does not abide by those rules, he might get thrown out of that system. So they will have to play ball and, you know, uh, play by the rules, right? And then there is the bank itself that might have its own set of guidelines as to how to ensure that the customer is protected. Yes. But the second question you ask is about cybersecurity. Yes. About... You know, we've heard cases where somebody in the United States lost their laptop and millions of cards got yes. stolen yes. or Yahoo gets hacked and many people well, maybe with even card, recently, credit card yeah. data. That's uh, cybersecurity. Uh, those things do happen. I mean, they've been happening around the world. So there are improved systems. One of the things that India has done well, in my mind, is two two factor authentication. When you do a card transaction in India, yes. the RBI says it has to go through 3D secure. It has to go through whatever this is a various systems, so that it's not enough that you logged in using your user ID password into this bank's uh, yes. net banking system. But on top of that, when you do a transaction, you give me another uh, what you know factor, like a PIN or a password or an OTP or whatever which makes it two-factor. So even if right. a person hacked into your bank account, they can't necessarily use your card because you've been asked another question, which might be an OTP that comes into your phone, phone. right? Yes. So two-factor that India has brought into the picture has been a strong deterrent, okay? Uh, of course, it also makes the transactions, uh, you know, a little bit inconvenient. A lot of transactions drop. Right. Someone was saying at the at the uh, panel I was speaking at uh, that forty percent of transactions are dropping. Hey, that's a large number. It's a large number. Yeah. yeah. The, so there's always a conflict between convenience and security. Right. You try to make things really convenient for people to come in. Well, even the bad guys come in. <laughs> you put a lot of barriers, then even the good guys can't get past it and do transactions easily. Right. right. So you're always trying to balance between convenience on one hand and security on the other. What is the uh, growth that you see down the line, say, next five years? How do you foresee the growth of the, uh, of the mobile wallet industry? Mm -hmm. I see a huge growth in mobile payments. Wallet is a uh, sort of loaded term. Uh, if you're looking at wallet as a general ledger that carries a stored value, that might go away. It might be the bank account where people would want to keep their money because we are all used to bank accounts yes. and it's being guaranteed uh, by the government, by the regulator. Uh, especially UPI will make the wallet as a uh, holder of stored value less important, right? But mobile wallet apps, if you will, will continue, especially UP UPI supported uh, compliant apps will continue because not only banks will make those kind of apps, also PSPs and other fintechs will also make apps 
in alliance and in partnership with banks. So I see the wallet, uh, the application on a smartphone, which does mobile payments, is here to stay. So, but um, wallet as a general ledger, as a uh, holder of stored value, might go away because bank accounts are better. I feel. Uh -huh. The role of the government and the regulator has to ensure standards appear True. so that there are lots of, there's lots of competition that gives choice to consumers of various types of mobile payment devices and apps, right? So the key is getting merchants on one side and consumers on the other side and to make digital transactions is important. And before the sort of India stack and the UPI world, single companies had to create both the merchant side and the consumer side, which was a tall order. Whereas with the UPI standards coming in, you can be a merchant only company and plug into the UPI infrastructure so that all consumers can come and pay to you. And on the other hand, you can be a consumer app provider where your consumer app will actually work with other merchant apps because they're also plugged into the UPI infrastructure. Got it. So that's the role the government needs to, needs play. to play. How do you unlock value and get a lot of private companies, banks, fintechs, and other financial services companies to compete for your business, you, you a consumer. Okay. okay. Um, uh, would you please elaborate on the technology of secure execution environment in the chipsets? Well, um, if you look at your smartphone, which you have one, uh, it runs an operating system. It uses a chipset underneath, the okay. CPU and a bunch of other peripheral chips and a bunch of sensors and so on. And on top of that operating system, a set of apps are running, applications. Right. Whether it's your mail app or whether it's Facebook or your mobile wallet app or whatever. Now, you can do security at the app layer, okay. which is you can use pins and passwords and uh, right. so on and so forth. Right. You can do security at a lower layer, at an operating system layer. Okay. Okay. You can do security at a chipset layer. What you're talking about is at the lower level, right? right. It makes it even more secure. You can't just ha hack into software and somehow take away my money or my information. Okay? It's easier to hack at an app layer, harder to hack at the operating system layer, even harder to hack at the hardware chipset layer. Oh. So when you have security built into the hardware, it makes it more secure, okay. right? And that's what All right. this level of security gives you. So are we at par with other global standards in terms of security? Well, or? Um, the, I, it's, it's not a, it's the manufacturers of, like for instance, uh, okay. Samsung is right. a company that I'm talking about. Okay. I think you're, you're, you probably have one of those phones. Right. They have a way of um, uh, uh, keeping things secure at their hardware uh, layer. Right. And I'm sure, uh, you know, iPhones and other uh, players have their own way of doing things. It just makes it harder to crack into the system. It comes but from it, chipset, chipset makers, makers like Intel itself. and okay. AMD or right. ARM and so on. So it comes from the and then it itself. comes into devices that are using those chipsets. Okay. And then the uh, phone makers right. build their own level layers around it. All right. Great. You were the head of technology at UIT. And uh, how is it progressing? Pro progressing really well. Okay. Uh, UID has crossed a billion uh, enrollments. And now the government is uh, ensuring that they take advantage of the UID system in many, many, many departments. as NREGA or PDS or financial transactions. And now after the demonetization, they're trying to make sure that digital payments happen using Aadhaar authentication, yes. Yes. open bank accounts using eKYC, yes. do AEPS, other enabled payment system transactions to do uh, merchant payments and withdrawals and so on. So I see a huge role for Aadhaar. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, one of the most transformative systems that we have built. Great. And, and on, finally, also how Nuvopay is uh, is facilitating Kirana stores across the nation. Yeah. And how well, Nuvopay, the company that we started, was basically to try and help in the financial inclusion space. Yes. Half the Indians don't have bank accounts, and many of them are in small cities, small towns, or villages. Of so we said, why can't we put a smartphone app in the hands of a Kirana fellow 
with a fingerprint scanner, Aadhaar fingerprint scanner, oh. that will suddenly make him a full-fledged banker, full-fledged ATM, and full-fledged pause machine, uh -huh. all in one. Right. And but he runs it, and it's a great. Uh, it's like the STD booth operator. It gives a job to somebody, and he does a lot of transactions, which gives convenience to the users. So today we have about forty thousand outlets okay. across India in twenty states where these transactions are happening. You can open bank accounts. You can do deposits withdrawals, remit money, you can do recharge your phone, your DTH, your data card, you can pay uh, utility bills, telephone bills, a whole bunch of transactions we do out of that Kirana store with a smartphone. Really, right sir. Thank you so much uh, for uh, sparing your precious time uh, for TIL2. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. <music>